In the last video, we talked about how a shortage from a price ceiling can result in bribes and black markets that pushes the price that buyers pay to the sellers up here to this willingness to pay on the last unit, QS. Now, that is one possibility. Another possibility, though, is that buyers won't compete with each other by trying to bribe the sellers, but instead they'll compete with each other by showing up uh, early to the stores, waiting in long lines, spending a lot of time uh, searching for the product. Now, it turns out that that analysis is pretty similar to the analysis of bribes, right? This line segment here between the price that you're allowed to pay and the maximum price that you'd be willing to pay on this last unit, that could represent a bribe that you're willing to pay to the uh, to the seller to make sure that you, you're one of the, the guys who, who gets a unit instead of one of the people who's left out of the allocation. But keep in mind that your time is also a value to you. You have an opportunity cost on your time. You could be working a job earning money, or you could be uh, at home producing some goods uh, for yourself that uh, it's, that's called household consumption that are of some value to you, some monetary value to you. And so instead of this line segment representing the bribe per unit that you pay to sellers, it could represent the value of your time. The amount of, uh, of time value that you are willing to spend per unit that you purchase, right? Now, uh, Let's think about what would happen under those circumstances. Let's say that you do, all of the buyers do end up only being willing to pay this low price down here. They're not gonna bribe, they're not gonna pay black market prices. So producer surplus ends up filling this area right here. So you're not paying that amount, you know, this amount to the, uh, to the sellers. However, how much consumer surplus would you end up with in this case? Well, the buyers are paying this dollar price, P bar, to the sellers, but they're also paying a time price, an amount, whatever their value is per hour of time, or sorry, however much time they spend waiting in line to get a unit. The value of that time is gonna re be represented by this line segment here. So when you take the price they're paying the seller plus the value of their time, their consumer surplus is gonna be the difference between their maximum willingness to pay along that demand curve and the total price that they're actually paying, the monetary price plus the time price to the sellers. And you end up with this as the consumer surplus. Now, notice that that leaves a gap in here, right, between the producer surplus and the consumer surplus. If there was no waiting in line, then consumer surplus, uh, and if there was no waiting in line and these were the buyers who, who managed to get the units, then all of this area in here would be filled up as consumer surplus. That's what the legislature intends to happen. Or if there's bribes and black markets, then all of this area in the middle is going to be captured by the sellers. It would all end up as producer surplus, which is not what the legislature intended, but uh, you know it's, it's an unintended consequence of the shortage. But if instead of any bribes or black markets, the, the buyers are just waiting in line, nobody gets that amount. Instead, we'll just shade this in as red. This area here represents the value of wasted time. All right. Now, you might think, under ordinary circumstances, you might think that a black market is a worse situation than people uh, standing in line. Okay. You might think that bribery is a worse thing than uh, long lines. But in terms of economic costs, it turns out lines and search costs are actually worse. They're less efficient. And why is that? Let me grab uh, the, the earlier uh, page that I was using. Okay, with black markets and bribes, notice that the producers capture this area, but at least somebody gets it, right? 
somebody is able to uh, to get this surplus. However, when you have lines and search costs, this value of wasted time goes to nobody. If I'm a buyer and I'm paying a bribe to a seller, well then that seller benefits by as much as it's costing me. Every dollar I give that, that seller is a, is a dollar in his pocket. So that is a transfer of surplus from me to the seller. But if I'm not paying him a bribe, if instead I'm just waiting in long lines, that time value, that time has value to me that I am losing, but I can't transfer that time to the seller. All I can do is waste it. All I can do is spend it in line. And so nobody captures this value of wasted time. And it turns out that this is a worse economic situation. The economic pie, the gains from trade actually shrinks if people are waiting in line instead of uh, transferring that, that surplus through bribes and through paying black market prices. All right, so uh, that's a counterintuitive result, but uh, it's something that we can learn from you know, a, our basic supply-demand model.